So it's a nice day, you're going out with your family to eat at a nice Italian restaurant. And you decide you're gonna order lasagna and it's this much? Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. When you could be making it simply for this price per person, right here. That is butt cheaper. When it comes to the La Saga, it can get a little bit expensive, it can get a little fancy, but I wanna make this as simple and easy and inexpensive as physically possible. So we're gonna break this down into each and every element. The noodles, the cheese choice, and how you make your sauce. Make the sauce simply, and we're gonna compare whether or not homemade from scratch noodles made by hand are better than just going to the store and buying them yourself. And I'm talking about price and flavor, by the way. Never skip on the flavor! But with that said, let's make this, shall we? There are many areas we can look to make this cheap. There's the pasta itself, cheese choices, and of course the sauce as maximally flavorful as humanly possible while keeping the cost lower than the ground. Is that even possible? I, I don't know. The first place I want to get into is of course going to be the lasagna pasta. Is it really cheaper to make it from scratch? Does it taste better from scratch? I fear for what the answer could be. Let's just rip the band-aid off and do this. In order to make those, you'll need a large bowl, start off with two cups or 300 grams of all-purpose flour, create a nice little well in that flour, careful, don't fall in, buddy. Then to that, you're gonna add three egg yolks and two whole eggs, start beating those eggs together with a fork while slowly incorporating the flour until you get a shaggy dough. Then pour that out onto the counter and begin kneading by hand. If the dough isn't picking up much more flour and it's just kind of going all over the place, then discard the excess dry flour and continue kneading your dough until it's completely smooth. Then wrap that in plastic wrap and let that rest for 30 minutes. Then divide that dough into four even segments, shape it to an oval, and roll it out until it's a little under a half an inch thick. Then run that through a pasta roller, starting at the widest setting, working your way to about a number four setting, which would be around an eighth of an inch thick. Now those are sheets worthy of giving a sheet a buyout. <laughs> Get it? Repeat this process with all of your segments of dough. Now from those sheets, measure them up to match the length of a 9x13 pan. Cut those segments in half or thirds depending on their width lengthwise to get yourself a total of about 10 to 12 sheets. That's really it. They're ready to boil. So with all that being said, the pricing of the homemade pasta comes out to this right here. Now let's boil one of these along with the store-bought version and decide if this is the cheapest and best tasting option or not. We did the math. It turns out that this goes for this price right here. And this is sort of like in the $1.50, $2 range. So so it's almost identical, give or take. So then it comes down to the quality of flavor. Okay, store-bought, got good chew, and it tastes like pasta. Mm. People always say, oh, there's no difference between store-bought and fresh pasta. Wrong! You're all lying to yourselves if you keep saying that. I'm sick of hearing it. There is a difference, but there's a caveat. The caveat is this. This ain't cheap, and neither is this. The point is that you're gonna have to spend extra money in order to even make it yourself. You could roll it with a rolling pin, but it's just, it's not the same. All things considered, flavor, time, effort, money spent, this is always gonna be your cheapest option, but this is the best flavor. Okay, so it turns out you can really go either route, but obviously homemade pasta will be the best taste and texture in this case, <sighs> but store-bought is fine. Now, let's talk sauce. Remember, sauce is the boss of flavor in lasagna. So take good care of it. Get yourself a pot or Dutch oven that's at least five quarts and heat up about two tablespoons or 30 grams of vegetable oil over medium high heat. Then once that's hot, hot, stupid donkey, add in one pound or 450 grams of ground beef, three quarters of a pound or 340 grams of ground pork, press and let that sear for three minutes, flip and sear on the other side for about two to three more minutes. Then using a potato masher, mash all of that until it's very fine. Transfer that to a separate container, add a touch more oil if needed, then add five cloves of garlic, thinly sliced, reduce the heat to medium, and let that cook, stirring occasionally until the garlic begins to toast and turn a golden brown. Then add one yellow onion, finely diced, and season to taste with salt, stir, then let that saute until the onion has begun to turn translucent, then add two teaspoons or four grams of fennel seed powder, and any other spices if you want them, although not necessary, maybe some red pepper flakes if you want a little spice. Stir that together and saute till fragrant about 30 seconds. Then add one six ounce can of tomato paste. Stir and let that cook until it begins to caramelize and stick to the bottom of the pan about another minute. Then add one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. Stir that in and then add your meaty man back. Stir again, there's a lot of stirring here. And let that simmer and reduce for five to seven minutes or until slightly thickened. Season to taste with salt and pepper and that is your saucy little guy. 
Next, in a medium bowl, add 15 ounces or 425 grams of ricotta, which for those of you who don't use ricotta frequently, and by the way, what are you doing if you're not, that is typically gonna be a whole regular sized tub, usually. Season that lightly with salt and pepper, optionally some olive oil, but that's expensive, so don't do that. I'm just being a silly man here. Then add in one whole egg and whisk all that together until smooth and homogenous. Now, we're almost ready to assemble, but first we cannot forget about our nudes. If you're using homemade pasta, when you're cooking it, you're only gonna boil it for about 30 to 45 seconds, and store-bought, you'll just follow the recommended time minus one minute to get them a little under al dente since they're going to go in the oven after this. Just please remember to generously season your pasta water if you want this to be good at all. Always nearly as salty as the ocean, homies. Now for the cheese, just mix together 8 ounces or 225 grams of grated mozzarella. You can get a cheap block for about $2 and just grate the whole thing. Then mix that with a third cup or 80 grams of Parmesan cheese. Now hear me out. Parmigiano Reggiano is the best option. You like that pronunciation, by the way? Italians, can we get a can we get a rating, please, on that? Wow, that's got a absolute unit out of 10, so I'll take that. Anyway, that's the most expensive option, but you should choose a cheese that's like Parmigiano or one of the, you know, Parmesan cheeses. I'm not going to recommend that, but that is the cheaper option, and it costs this much, so. I don't control the market price of Parmigiano, okay? But I wish I did. Call me the... Parmigiano kingpin. Assembly is ridiculously easy, and people get tripped up about it for no reason at all, so here's all you need to know. First, put one cup of sauce at the bottom of a 9x13 baking dish, spread it edge to edge. From there, add two to three sheets of lasagna, depending on their width, so that it also goes edge to edge, such as this. Add on a third of your ricotta mixture, spread it out, followed by a third of your cheese mixture. Then next up, another cup of sauce, spread that brother out, two to three more lasagna sheets, the next third of your ricotta mixture, the next third of your cheese, another layer of sauce, more lasagna sheets, your remaining ricotta, and this time, another ladle, which should be the last ladle of your sauce. Then finish with the rest of your cheese. If you want or need more cheese, feel free to add it, but that's gonna cost you extra, son. Then add some greased foil on top of your baking tray, dish, whatever the hell they're called, wrap it tightly, and pop it into an oven preheated to 375 Fahrenheit for 25 minutes, then uncover it and cook an additional 30 to 35 minutes, or until stunning, bubbly patches of deep brown cheese with craggly edges emerge. I mean, look at this. This is a proper lasagna. Those little crispy bits on the edge will have you wetting your pants while yodeling on a mountaintop. Don't ask me why. Now just let that rest for 15 minutes to cool slightly, then using a sharp knife, cut into 12 evenly sized square pieces, pop it on a plate, and let's see if we just made the most darn delicious and simple lasagnas for this price per person right here. Okay, we have a beautiful layer. Did you see that catch? Lasaga. Now, before we even begin talking about the price, which is this right here. Very nice. Let's talk about this lasaga, which is hot. Okay, listen carefully, all right? It just looks beautiful. I can cut it and still layer. You can enjoy it as it's meant to be. And it was meant to be absolutely awesome. Noodles cook perfectly. It still has body, it still has texture to it. You've got each individual noodle, your teeth crash through every layer into the cheese, the meat, the caramelized tomato sauce. I mean, this is better than any average lasagna, and yet it is less expensive than most lasagna. That ain't but cheaper. I don't know what the gosh darn heck is. So you get out there and you make a lasaga because it's not that hard. And it's your greatest dinner party yet and your cheapest. You want to know what else has Papa's hot steamy sauce all over it? B-roll. Guys, and that is it. So we made our lasagna and it turned out quite good. And for this price, grand total and this price per person, and that's for a generous serving, by the way, with a little bit of cheese on it. That's about as good and cheap as the lasagna is gonna get. What, are you gonna go to the frozen aisle and go get your frozen lasagna and reheat it? Oh yeah, mm. Don't you love pasta sauce that tastes identical to ketchup? Disgusting. Point is, you can make your lasagna however you please, but if you follow this guide first, get yourself in there. If you've never cooked before, this is a great place to start and save money at the same time. But with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you. can't go any lower, okay? I'm a big man.